Hello everybody, welcome back to this Sunday afternoon. We got an exciting game of League of Legends today. We've got St. Clair Saints taking on Boston University, round two of CeeLo playoffs. I'm your host, Theo, known as the Holy Juan. I'm joined by Gabriel today. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling really, really good about this. Uh, from just the, 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 the best of five that is no longer just the best of three, because usually in the season, right, you play the best of threes, but now the best of fives, they're like, they're even more entertaining, right? Because on a best of three, you have the time to feel out your opponent in the first game, and then whoever lost that first game, you start sweating, because if you lose the next one, you're done. So you really have to pull out all the stops, and then all in. But in a best of five, you just have so much more potential to play around with your opponent and get a bigger feel because you have more games to play with. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see how that's going to play out. Smolder got gutted this patch, so we're not seeing him anymore. So I'm really excited about that because that champion was, the, I mean, he was busted. Uh, he, he was like the, the, how to put this, the Cassante of the bot lane. Um, the, 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 yeah, the Yone of the bot lane, maybe. <laughs> Nah, uh, he, he didn't have enough dashes to be the Yone of the bot lane, you know? It's kind of, because like, Yone, Yone, Kasante, they all have too many dashes. But like, Smolder only had one, and it was technically a movement speed buff that let him go over the walls. Point is, he's not here anymore, and I'm very happy about it. So we're actually going to be seeing some skill-based ADCs in the bot lane. Uh, what, are, what are you excited to see? I'm just excited to see a good best of five series. As you said, it was two very, very strong teams. Let's take a look at the standings really quickly to see how good they really were in the regular season. Our Saints, 7-0, 100% win ratio, won every single game and Ooh. had a great, a great season. Boston University also had a great season, 6-0 and 1. So dropping one map, but strong seasons from both teams. And it all comes down to today. One team will be moving on, one team will not. So a very, very important series for both teams. Uh, our Saints have been on absolute fire and in great playoff form, and they're going to be looking for a nice 3-0 or 3-1 victory today. Yeah, so as we're going to be heading into draft very soon, what are the picks that you expect to see uh, the, for, for, for this game? You know, in top lane, Ricky uh, has a lot of pocket picks, and... Maybe an Olaf is something that we might see him pick out, but let's we're right into draft. Let's talk about it. the bands from Sai Sinclair. It was Lee Sin, Zoe, and Ash, and the side of Boston banned out Callista, Tristana, and Twisted Fate. St. Clair picked up Nico first, and it looks like Boston's gonna be answering with Senna Ooh. and Hui. Yeah, okay. If they're locking in the Senna, I'm kind of scared because the Senna ADC also got gutted this patch, right? The souls that she receives are significantly lower now so maybe they're a little bit stuck in the past if they're still playing that um because the meta is no longer centered around that senna adc slash support or fasting senna uh so we're it's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out hui is pretty much a staple of the mid lane nowadays even though she is uh he oh my god i always forget um but hui was kind of new but like picked up very very quickly um, Jinx Lulu picked for the bot lane for St. Clair. Really, I, mean, I won't say staple because usually you want to pair Lulu with Aphelios, but I mean, Jinx Lulu works super, super well. Um, get that polymorph on anybody that gets close and, you know, just generally speaking, annoy everybody in the bot lane. Yeah, and it's going to be Orn. Blind pick for Boston. Or Orn is a top player. You can blind pick, but. Ricky, definitely a very strong top laner. They're going to ban out that Olaf as expected because it does very well into Orn. But Orn is one that can hold his own in most matchups. Yeah. Not too many too hard matchups where you really want to find kills in. But Orn, you just want to stay alive, level up, level up your yeah. items and play the game slow. So let's see if Saints decide to play a better maybe front to back team comp. They have the Jinx Lula already. So if they can get a couple more champs that just peel for that Jinx and uh, just fr hit the front line of Boston. That's going to be the way to play for St. Clair. It's going to be a rec side ban Ooh. from the side of St. Clair. Usually we see that in top lane nowadays, yeah. but it's going to be banned out. So Boston, well, we will take that in the jungle. Let's see what else they decide to ban out. It's going to be the Xin Zhao for Boston. St. Clair now still have a ban to think about. There's still a, many things to ban out. A jungler for Boston and a support maybe, or an ADC. You never really know with that center. It's a bit of a flex pick. So Saints definitely thinking hard about this one. And they yeah. got 10 more seconds to pan something out here. 
here, Shit. depending on what they want to... Oh, okay, the Vine, going for the jungle ban. So double jungle ban, actually triple jungle ban for the Saints. Uh, which actually isn't too surprising. The jungle does have a lot of agency, so you want to kind of get them on a little bit of a weaker foot um, when they are playing. You know, ban out those champions that they're really comfortable with. Granted, at this level of play, you're kind of semi-comfortable with most champions. It's not like they're first-timing something. But, uh, ooh, the Viego actually coming out. <laughs> okay, okay. We haven't seen it too much in pro play, but it has showed up a few times here and there in Collegiate. So... It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Viego is more of a diver, yeah. which does kind of try and get the assassination on ADCs or stuff like that, but like over a longer period of time on like assassins. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out, given the fact that kind of the counter to a diver is a Lulu on that support. So oh, Diana Yasuo maybe? Oh, that's a possibility actually. Yeah, I could see the Diana Yasuo here coming out for that jungle top combo. Uh, but then you wouldn't have a, you'd have double AP for your mid jungle, which, eh, it can be good, it can be bad, it depends, usually if you're roaming with your mid laner as a jungler, um, to try and go get in top lane, you want to have different kinds of damage, but, eh, it's fine, it's not a huge detail. Here, they're gonna, okay, yeah, the Aatrox, the yeah. Aatrox, the tank buster, uh, gonna be very, very fun to play that into Orn, because, let's be honest, Orn, uh, he might have one unstoppable, but he can't stop all those Qs. Yeah, <laughs> and it's gonna be the Wombo combo with the Nico Diana coming out here for St. Clair in the team fights. They're gonna be looking very, very dangerous. Boston are gonna need to pick an ADC here. Actually, Wait, what? they're gonna go for a Kled. It might be Orn in the bot lane alongside that center, and that's gonna be the case. Nice little drafting here from Boston, mm. catching St. Clair off guard for sure, and Kled. Uh, I guess a counter pick to Aatrox. Yeah, a very so, good counter pick. So that's going to be great drafting from Boston here. St. Clair still have a very strong draft, but it's going to be it's going to be a hard one to play into into Boston side here. I I have to say, the draft is definitely St. Clair sided. If you get to the team fights, in terms of enjoyment, I'll say Boston University definitely has the advantage because they get to listen to Cled voice lines. Which um, is a hundred, like a one hundred percent more al boost in any game. Uh, so that's definitely one of the big buffs that they have. On top of that, uh, that Senna Orn combo in the bot lane is actually pretty good, mainly if it's well practiced. Uh, one of the things that I like to point out with the Senna Orn is that usually it's going to be a fasting Senna, which is the Senna's support. She's the ADC, but she still deals a lot of damage. The Hue in the mid lane is not too bad into the Nico, to be honest. It's kind of more of a skill matchup. Uh, Nico's going to get poked a lot, though, so... I mean, I'd say take second win, but that's only for top lane matchups. You can't really do that on a mage. Uh, you need <laughs> you need mana and you need other uh, other runes to help you out. So it's kind of going to be a question of can Nico dodge those skill shots uh, and keep up with the wave clear that Hue has, because QQ or Q... W or QE have a lot of wave clear since they're all pretty much all AoE. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see how that one plays out. In team fights, the only thing that I'm gonna have to say is Boston is a little bit lacking for that team fight wombo combo. Like don't get me wrong, Senna scales like there's no tomorrow. But in terms of peeling and all of that, like Klet dives in. Uh, Viego dives in, then you have Orn that's going to try and go for an airborne with the ultimates plus the pillar. Um, and then you're kind of going to have Hue as an artillery mage, kind of at the same line as uh, the Senna, right? Because the Senna is kind of weird, right? When you look at her in concept, she's kind of like artillery because she has so much range. Yeah. But it's going to be it's going to be hard to see how those team fights play out. Yeah, it's going to be interesting with that Viego. I think that's the most important pick for the side of Boston College here. If they can get a reset early, that's going to be their way to victory here. But with the Saints team comp, I think it's going to be very, very hard to do. They have so much appeal for their carries. But the Diana is also an interesting pick for the Saints. She likes to go into the back lane. So yeah. if the Diana ever overextends and the Viego can get a reset off that, that's going to be, I think, the way for Boston to play these team fights. I think it's because Saints have a very good Wombo combo for a team fight, all right? You, like, I can just see it when I saw the draft, all right? Draft is like this. You've got Jinx here. You've got the enemy team here, right? And then you're going to have Nico going to do a Nico, Nico, Nee Pop Blossom. 
When that happens, Diana jumps in, ults. So now not only is everybody stunned, now they're stunned and in Diana ult. Then boom. And then meanwhile, Aatrox is doing Q1, Q2. And then as they're all grouped up in Diana ult, you have Q3 from Aatrox. And during that entire time, Lulu is pocketing Jinx. And Jinx is, well, doing Jinx things. Yeah, in other just... words, going crazy and blowing everything up. <laughs> one reset is all you need for both of these teams, Viego and Jinx. So it's going to be an interesting one to watch. We're going to throw it to a very, very quick break. But we'll be right back with the start of Game 1.
Welcome back, everybody. We are just getting into game one of this best of five series. And what do you, what do you think? What do you think this game is gonna head? All right. Well, starting off, runes seem pretty standard. You have uh, spellbook Orn, which is the only really thing that'll be kind of surprising. I mean, Orn usually plays spellbook, um, but the only one of the things that is pretty interesting is the rise of the use of TP. Um, and in Proplay, this is starting to show up a lot, a lot. But even here, we're seeing it. There's three TPs on the side of Boston University, two TPs on the side of the Saints. Um, so lots of TPs means lots of plays possible and a lot of mobility available. As we can see here, though, a lot of emoting going on. They are... Uh, I mean, it, clearly they're not threatened by each other. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, this double ranged bot lane is definitely going to be pretty good into the Senna Orn because the Orange is going to be taking poke for free. There's not too much he can really do to avoid it, but that's how these Senna lanes usually go. You don't want uh, to be fighting too much. You just want to scale up, but same goes with Jinx. Jinx would love to get a scaled up as the matchup in mid lane is going to be Nico between Hui. Uh, usually a pretty pretty even matchup shouldn't be too many fireworks but the later the game goes both of these champs are just going to get that much stronger yeah for sure and the other thing to kind of bring to attention is going to be the fact that um the Hui, right i mean she she scales hard but when it, the Senna is kind of the win condition instead of the uh, the the Hui, which granted will deal significant amounts of damage into that late game. Um, the Kled and the Viego are kind of wild cards because if Kled gets fed, I mean I don't know if you've played against a fed Kled, but uh, first of all it rhymes, which is nice, but it's like it is terrifying to go up against a fed Kled. So. We're going to kind of see how that one is going to play out. Along with that, though, is that the Senna is the one with the support item. Yeah. So Orn is the only one that's actually going to need to significantly farm. And even then, Orn's kind of the quote-unquote support. So he can drop CS, and that's kind of the advantage um, of fasting Senna, right? But again, those souls are significantly decreased. Uh, unless the Senna is playing support, but if the Senna is playing support, then, um, well, you have less souls, uh, or sorry, you have more souls but less gold, which means you don't get those items as quickly, which means uh, you will be lacking in a certain amount of damage, even though you have more range. Granted, the souls do give like 0.75 AD if memory serves, but it's it's not that significant, you know? Yeah, and then this uh, no top lane matchup, where Kled does have the counter pick, Ricky is gonna have the early push here, so it should be early scuttle crab here going over to, over to that Diana who will pick that one up. Viego is not gonna be able to contest that one, so both junglers went from bot to top, but not too much going on in the early game. And as you see, Matt is gonna easily pick up that scuttle crab. Viego is gonna try and move over toward that maybe bot river and pick up that scuttle crab, but. Maddie is matching it perfectly, and it, Sinclair should have the push down in balling, but it looks like Boston's actually got that one, so they're going to be playing this one a bit more passive. As you see, Bakery Boy's actually moving alongside Maddie there to pick up that second Skull Crab, but a lot of trading going on the top, but Kled, very, very dangerous when he gets to low HPs because he can remount so, so quickly. Ricky, knowing that, won't overextend there, and... Might be something going on here down the bot lane. No, it doesn't look like so. It seems like both bot lanes are contempt with just chilling and farming up. And you can see why that is. Once that Jinx Lulu gets to that 2-3 item stage, they become very, very scary. And with that call as well in the inventory, it's going to be farm, farm central here. Yeah, well, farm central for Jinx because the Senna can't really farm since, you know, Senna has the support Oh, item. first blood. Oh, wait. Yep. Uh, there's the counter pick in the top lane. I didn't even realize that happened. But yeah, uh, Ricky is definitely in a losing lane with that anti-heal on Kled's base Q, uh, well, when he's mounted. Plus, uh, just insane amounts of damage that can come out from Kled, uh, are definitely something that are scary. The only thing is, you need to play around the anti-heal that Kled has as Aatrox, which is really hard to do since he kind of starts off with it. So by the time you get to that Q3, you have anti-heal applied to you. Uh, so it's just, it's 
not fun to play. Um, but yeah, you have to take those trades or else you just lose health for nothing. Without a doubt, and it's going to be the Void Grubs picked up early for Boston. All three should be going over to them as they have that top lane prior, mid lane prior. Maddie's going to try and go for something, but level 5 here, I don't know how much he can really get done here. He's going to try and steal something too. away. Won't find too much. There's a minion there helping him out. That's something, <laughs> but that was the Nico Red team is going to take all three Void Grubs. The ult... Oh. Used by Kled just to get back to lane. I don't know how much I like that one, but it's going to get a really good trade here onto Ricky, who kind of stepped back up, didn't really respect. He's going to get the full combo off, gets the mount as well, and Kled is going to be able to remount, has that passive up, but if Ricky can find one more full combo, could be a kill here. Let's see what happens up in this top lane. Kled going to respect it a little bit, going to back up a little bit. Ricky is up on the CS, has the wave uh, bouncing towards the... Kled's side, but he's going to need a dive here from Batty, who's not going to be making his way up towards that top lane. He's going to make the way towards bot lane. I think Saints playing around these dragons might be their strong point. Yeah, for sure. And we kind of saw that in that trade in the top lane with uh, Aatrox and Kled. He did his full combo, but he was anti-healed the whole way, and he barely healed for anything. Uh, the other thing to take into consideration is Bakery Boy is not having a good time in that lane. I mean, look at the health bars. Hui is burning a lot of mana. I won't deny that. But, I mean, so is Bakery Boy and his health is going down too. So, it's not ideal to have that situation. Um, definitely want to at least... Yeah, I mean, we can see he bought the refills. Um, just try and keep that health topped off. Because he could get ganked and just instantly die really, really quickly. Um, in the bot lane, though, the Saints definitely have the advantage here. They're like they're getting as much farm as they want. It's basically a free lane because they can't really fight. Uh, Boston can't fight because Orn doesn't have like it's not a hook champion, right? You're not playing a Nautilus or a Pike or something like that, so you can't really engage. So you're just gonna have to deal with those waves being pushed in and farm those. And we can just see it in the farm here with Jinx at 69 farm. And, I mean, Orn is clearly lacking behind at 54. Uh, but, again, that's fine because the Orn is, quote-unquote, support. Without a doubt. And in that meantime, Saints were able to pick up the first dragon. It's going to be the Kemptic dragon going over. Maddie just soloed it. No real contest coming out from the Viego. So, Saints splitting the map. They're willing to give up a bit more top lane to get a bit more down to that ball lane. But it looks like the Scuttle Crab is going to get picked up here by Miracle, actually. Making his way over towards that mid lane. Might look to harass this Viego a little bit and get him off that Skull Crab. Ricky has to be careful here in the top lane as the Viego is here as well. Pain Court there as well. But nothing too much is going to happen here. You can see the Kled is up a level but down about 10 CS. So Ricky still doing a decent job in this counter matchup. Just got killed very, very early on. Maddie's going to be there for the 2v2. But I don't know how strong this 2v2 is coming out from the Saints top side. They're going to choose to not fight down uh, and back off. I think playing around this bot lane for the Saints is just the best way to go. Yeah, I said the 2v2 for Aatrox Diana isn't too bad considering that Viego and Kled have the same damage type so that Aatrox will tank a lot with the steel caps. Um, plus Diana, since she is magic damage, will deal a significant amount of damage uh, to both the Kled and Viego since, you know, Diana has a lot of AoE. Um, but it's kind of going to be iffy since Kled does have that extra kill, that extra 300 gold to play around with. Um, but actually, no, it's 400 because it was first blood. Uh, so if they wanted to take it, they probably could, but it would be a 50-50. Yeah, and I don't think it's worth taking the risk, especially when your bot lane is up, how much, 30 CS down there. You just want to let Rock Boom scale. He's going to back here, might be able to pick up that first item. I don't think he'll be able to have it just, just yet, but we'll be very, very close to it. But pick up the Recurve Bow and then actually the Noon Quiver instead. I think going for Kraken Slayer in this game is best for that first item on that Jinx. And I think that's exactly what he's going to opt for. But as you were saying, in that mid lane, Bakery Boy having a really rough time against that way. Down 20 CS, completely isolated. So Samkin doing a great, great job on that way and building a very, very big advantage for themselves. The plate's actually going to go down to Boston University down this ball lane as Saints wow. needed to find a recall there. But now as the waves begin to bounce back, there might be a gank towards mid lane. No, that's just Lulu. 
making sure Nico can clear this out. The Void Grub is actually going to be taken by the Saints as they get a bit of priority in that top lane as well. Great little macro from them to make sure that Boston can get six. Void Grub split three and three, but now Rock Boom is oh. as good as that. He's going to try and flash away, but that is for oh. nothing. I think the Lulu ult comes out as well, but everything going to get committed onto Rock Boom there. And they, as soon as they saw that Lulu rotate over to that mid lane, they instantly pushed the play. Boston University doing a great job, but on the split map, Maddie's gonna go for something here onto this. Oh, uh, they should be able to find the kill. Sentinel comes out, they will not let him remount. Maddie gonna pick that one up. Nice little split map play. Uh, Kled didn't respect the split map, it does go down. A great play from Boston, but a great play from St. Clair in response. Yeah, for sure, and we kind of saw what happened there. Uh, Boston basically CC locked the Jinx to Oblivion. What was that, like four seconds of Sunlock, I think? Yeah. And then even through the, the wild growth from Lulu, you, you can't do anything about that. You're not moving anyways, right? Your best chance was to let the enemy CC you back to your tower. And let's be honest, they're never going to do that because that's to their disadvantage. So... Uh, they do have a lot of that crowd control and it's going to be hard to deal with it. Uh, but again, once they get into those team fight situations, I'm pretty sure that Sinclair is going to have the advantage and is going to be able to deal with that crowd control relatively easily. Uh, oh, Nico Pop Blossom, I'm not going to connect onto the play, but will cost her the flash. Some trading gonna come out, yeah. but nothing really. But Rock Boom walking up way too far again. The 1v2 is, is gonna go down yet again. That should oh, no. never happen, but it will happen here. B big mistake there from Rock Boom. And in the mid lane, both mid laners exchanged ults and flashes, but nobody went down there. Miracle gonna try and look for a bait here for Maddie, and, but I don't think they have enough damage to kill this Orn. This Orn is very, very tanky. Only behind 6 CS now as Rock Boom falls yet again. and. The Dragon's gonna go over to Boston University as they're outplaying St. Clair pretty heavily in this early game. I think St. Clair aren't playing to their advantages, but Ricky gonna look for a solo kill here onto this Clair. has the flash advantage, has the ultimate, but the remount's gonna come through. Ricky, does he have the damage to finish this one off? Kled not doing too much damage back. One more Q will take the remount and the auto is going to pick him up. Great solo kill for Ricky there in the counter matchup. He's going to grab a big advantage of this as there's no teleport inside of the Kled as Saints look to make their way back into this game. Yeah, that was a really good trade by uh, Ricky there. Just very well executed. He played that perfectly. I think Kled kind of took a little bit more than he could chew. Like, don't get me wrong, he does have the counter matchup, but I mean... Aatrox has a significant amount of healing, so even if you anti-heal him, I mean, 40% reduced healing, that, that's not 50%, that's 40%, so you're not even having his healing. Uh, he's still going to heal through that, right? I mean, we've seen it multiple times in late game fights where Aatrox is still healing through anti-heal. Um, but you were talking about how tanky this Ornn is. I Bring your attention to his items. First item are Steel Caps, then Bomby Cinder for Wave Clear, followed by Warden's Veil, building into a Frozen Heart eventually, as he has the Buckler. Literally everything he has is just damage reduction. I mean, Warden's Veil reduces damage by up to 20%, uh, Steel Caps by another 12, and then Bomby Cinder, just perfect for Wave Clear here. We do see a fight in the top lane, and Ricky will go down. Uh, kill going to that Kled. Honestly, I don't know if they want to prioritize Kled or uh, Viego getting stronger. Which one would be better in your opinion? I think the Viego, because as I said earlier, the reset champions are going to be the name of the game here. If Rock Boom can get a reset early, that's going to be their way to victory. But the ult's going to come out onto him from this way, and he does take so much damage forced the Lulu ult as well. Rock Boom going to be at 1 HP to start off this team fight. But look at the Maddie with a flash in. Can they find anything? Bakery Boy going to go for their ultimate. They have an ultimate coming as well. They're able to take down Hue. The Rock Boom gets the reset. They're able to take the Rift Herald as well. And they're just going to hit front to back here. This should be a wipe for the Saints as all three kills go in their favor. That's a huge team fight win for them. You can see they peeled Rock Boom and then they yep. found one target, found the reset. They're going to Rift Herald mid lane here, try and take out that turret as now the momentum of this game has swung dramatically. Yeah, now momentum is 
completely in the hands of the Saints or not even allowed to use the second part of his ultimate thing. I believe that was a polymorph. Uh, Orn dead. Oh yeah, Orn's dead. Oh, okay. I mean, that works too. Um, I, I didn't think they were able to kill him. I mean, I guess magic damage go for, um, because all his resistances are physical. But yeah, just, I, I was kind of talking about this when we we're going over the crap and now we can see an application. The team fight for the Saints is ludicrous. Like the only better team fight you could have is if you had a Yasuo in this team composition. Because you have three airborns, uh, but one way or the other, it's a terrific draft that goes that does a front to back perfectly. The best counter to this, I would say, is an assassin. If you kind of have, I don't know, like a Talon or a Zed, okay, Zed's kind of useless, but like a, a Kiana even, uh, you could actually do something. But in this scenario, you just can't, right? Because there's just so much going on with that Jinx, with that Nico, with the Diana, with that Aatrox, that you don't have the opportunity to just take out the back line. Yeah, I mean, you're completely right. The team fight from St. Clair College proven to be so, so strong there. And as soon as that Nico ult hits just one target, if the Diana is able to follow up on that, the Jinx able to just get one auto attack in there, the fight is instantly swung in their favor and you can see the later this game goes the more items Rockboom gets the scarier it's going to be for Boston University. Now both teams just going to be clearing out some waves. Dragon spawning very very soon here. It's going to be one to fight over and I think Saints definitely should be taking the fight early here but they walk up pretty far here. Let's see if they can find anything. The flash forced out from Huey. The Miracle does get stunned up but will not get followed up on and that's a great start for the Saints. You can see the flank coming in there from the Nico doing half HP to that center. That's going to be a huge chunk, and that could guarantee the drag over to the St. Clair Saints. They're going to just start hitting down for free, and I don't think Boston University can come and contest this one. They don't really have the opportunity to contest this. They can try, but it's going to be really, really hard to do. Clyde uh, is just going to be split pushing, so they are opting out of this one, uh, which is completely logical. They, just, they don't have the priority. Um, so yeah, side lanes are going to be the priority for Boston, try and uh, kind of cross map. But even then, it's going to be really, really difficult to get a good uh, oh, play in. Oh. No, they're not. They were oh, looking okay. to dive in, but he gave up his position and the tower is going to fall here for the Saints. Nice little tempo play off that dragon as they just four-man that ball in and Boston just can't get any answer at the moment. You can see shutdowns on both Maddie and Bakery Boy and those AP champions. Yes, uh, the Orn is going to be tanky, but he doesn't have any MR, so nope. he will get completely one-tapped Wait. by those AP carries from the Saints. As oh, they're going to take the map. No. I really hope that's not... Okay, who... I just remember Spectre's Cowl takes uh, Rejuvenation Beat. Okay, I, w I saw the Rejuvenation Beat and I was like, don't tell me he's building hard steel as like the second item. But no, we're, we're okay. It's not hard steel. He's building the uh, Ape Sunfire. Uh, the, the MR Sunfire. I, I, I always forget the name of that one. I, I couldn't help you there. <laughs> it's the MR Sunfire, you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good item, generally speaking. Uh, mainly considering the fact that both the AP champions have a shutdown uh, on the side of the Saints. So very good purchase that will be coming out eventually. How are, How is Senna doing in terms of souls? She should have like, I think, okay, wait, hold on. We're at almost 20 minutes. She should be at around 50, I think. At bare minimum 50, if not more. Actually, wait, at 20 minutes, 20 times uh, that, uh, actually, she should be closer to 100. Relatively close to 100. I, I guess mean, we're going to see at some point, uh, whenever <laughs> whenever the uh, the souls show up. It would be pretty interesting, though, to see like a, um, a super, super late game Senna. Yeah, of course. I mean, we all know how well, well Senna scales, so it's going to be really the only way that the Saints, uh, that Boston can kind of counteract this Jinx scaling is with that Senna, but she went for the first item static shave. I don't know how much I like that one, especially on the support Senna. 
I don't think that's the best purchase for the first item, but... Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. Static Shift is kind of a bait item, mainly on Senna. Like, it can, it can be built. Is it good? No. Like, if you went Rapid Fire Cannon first item, I'd say, okay, you're cooking. Because at least now you can try and farm souls easier, because you have more range, right? But Static Shiv? Like, yeah, I have AoE. That's it. Like, that's all that Static Shiv really gives you. And because of that, it just... It has no use on a Senna when she's, you know, playing support. If you want, like, usually you start off Eclipse or, like, Lethality items. Um, but again, it is technically ADC, so going for attack speed isn't bad. But it's Senna. If you're going to go attack speed, at least have lethal tempo. This one, it's a fleet footwork, so. I don't know, I would like to see the crit builds coming up from Senna's these days. Crit yeah. did get buffed, and with the scaling Senna has, I just think it's a great, great option for her. But Baron is up on the map now. Saints have those two item power spikes on all, on their top laner, mid laner, and ADC. And Diana also a very, very far ahead here, man. He's going to get out of danger here. Boston are the Ooh. ones looking for a fight here. And they're going to go on to Miracle. But he's going to be able to get out with his life for just a second. Oh he's actually going to get one tapped. So not going to get his ultimate off. Rock Boom has to run for his life as Kled's going to ult in as well. It looks like just one kill going over to Boston University here. But on the split side of the map, Bakery Boy is pushing out those top waves. So they trade out a kill onto the support for an ultimate flash and some priority up in that top lane. But Dragon isn't up yet. It's going to be up in less than a minute here. But Rock Boom walking up way too far for this wave. Will be forced to flash. Senna fails to flash over the wall. Does land the W though. So the kill will come through. That's a huge kill there onto Rock Boom. And now Bakery Boy also get, going to get taken down. Will uses ultimate. But just no follow up here from the Saints. They just threw away their huge lead as the Baron's going to get taken by Boston here for sure. Uh, okay, that happened. That should not have happened, but that happened. I mean, okay, let's, let's like, take a, a step back to try to understand what happened here. Step one, Lulu explodes. Um, and flashes. So... Oh, maybe a steal here on the Baron coming wait? out. Oh, it's gonna be huge engage from both Manny and Ricky. They're gonna land the ultimates and the fall through should come through here. Baron's on 2.4k HP. Kled gets the rebound, but Ricky is so massive on this. Aatrox will look for the Q3. Jinx Rocket misses. The race reset comes out from Viego. Ricky will not find the kill. There's Viego gets all the resets. Miracle gonna get hit by the Q1. The will you stay alive? The TP comes through and 3v5 Saints are able to stop the bear and the dragons up as well. They're gonna make their way over to that and with some heroics coming out from Maddie and Ricky. They're gonna be able to take their third dragon of the game and put themselves on soul point. What did I just witness? That should not have happened, but okay. I mean, they kind of made up for their loss. I mean, they got two kills. Or was that three? I think it was two. They tied the kills. They get the third dragon, or their third dragon, fourth dragon in general, um, which is an Infernal Drake. That's a lot of damage that they will have available. And then on top of that... Um, I mean, just look at the gold, right? You've got Maddie, uh, wait, no, not Maddie. Um, Ricky right now with 9,000 gold to Kled's 8,000. I mean, that's significant. That's a 1,000 gold lead in the top lane. Uh, ooh, wait, Bakery Boy just one-shot the, the Senna. All right, that is huge. Yeah, I mean, that was a great play there from Bakery Boy. Gonna pick up that Senna there, so it's gonna have a lot of momentum now for the Saints. They could even look to start up the Baron here as they are pretty far ahead still, having those three dragons. It's gonna be the Baron start coming out for them here, and let's see if the game is gonna flip on its head here. TP comes out from Ricky LaFur here on that Aatrox, and it looks like Boston's just gonna choose to give this one away, but Bakery Boy will go down. The Baron's gonna get taken down for the Saints as the team fight comes out here. This Kled is gonna do so much damage. I won't find the kill on Tomati just yet, who will go down to the way. But if Saints can get out with three three members, would still be a good play for them. Ricky gonna find a huge Q there to get Kled off his mount. Gonna get take the Viego into the middle. 
another team. Let's see if Rockbloom can even find a kill here. No, Saint's gonna choose to just get out with their lives and trading two lives for a Baron is always worth it. They're gonna get the resets going here. Rockbloom gonna stop a couple resets with that rocket. They're gonna reset themselves and look to push again with the Baron. Yeah, getting that push with the Baron is going to be huge. But before that, they need to defend. Their minions are gone, so they can't really do much right now. They're going to clear out that wave, get their recalls, and then uh, kind of try and get that push in all three lanes if possible. Uh, this way you pressure a little bit everywhere. Uh, but looking at the items, so Aatrox, of course, going Lethality, that's kind of the strong build right now. Um, and then Diana going full AP, has that Zhonya's available, which is huge, we've seen it used so many times. Uh, it's just perfect on Diana. Nico has the Rocket Belt and has that Zhonya's too. So we're going to see massive Pop Blossoms coming out, um, jump scares possibly. You know what I want to see? I want to see a Nico. The, the play as like a a, um, a blast cone or something. Okay. All right. Like on the other side of the a wall, or and like then a just <laughs> Nico Nico knee boom explodes the entire enemy team before an objective. Like that would be great. Oh, another pick onto the Senna one tapped by Maddie. The Senna a couple times now just out of position is gonna get one shot and losing that Senna so early loses you so much pressure. Let's see if Saints can get something going here. They are kind of all stacked up in that mid lane. Want to send someone down to that ball and to push out that wave. It's going to be, uh, I think, the Nico down there disguised as the Lulu. Clear out that wave and they're going to play a 4-1 here. They do drop a turret down in the ball lane, but the reset is going to come through and let's see Ricky popping that ultimate. Going to look to go onto this way what? early, but the... Oh my goodness, the W does land. Rockboom picks up that kill and Saints going to look to find the chase here. Looking how much damage they do. Rockboom finding that reset onto Jinx. Going to get one more reset as they're pushing right into the base. They should be able to take this tier 3 and start hitting away at the inhibitor. There, it's going to drop. Saints have a 5v3 here for a good amount of time. 30 seconds can they end, end the game off here? They have the turret. They should be able to do it here. Pop Blossom going to come through onto the cloud. Can they find the kill on them very, very quickly? The reset's going to come through. They're going to find the Senna as well on the backline. Rock Boom with so much attack speed. Going to take down that Viego. That's going to be the end of the game. A Saint very, very Ooh. swiftly from kind of very, very even game are able to end the game off of that one Baron play. Yeah, for sure. That was a very clean play off that Baron. Just... Get three people out and then rush, rush mid, get the whole push and win. Uh, very good execution by Saints. They did have the better draft in this case. Um, so I'd say Boston was at a pretty big disadvantage. So we might see a little bit of a different draft coming from Boston uh, here on their next game. But big props to uh, Ricky that somehow pulled the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So, you know how he landed the W on the Hui, right? He, like, did the thing, and then the Hui got hit by the W. But Hui feared him. Now, in theory, that makes Aatrox run away from Hui. But what happened was, I don't know if this is a bug or something, but when he got feared, he kind of just turned around and then turned around back again, and then ran into a wall and then turned around. And I was like, what?! Because he wasn't running backwards. Because in theory, if you get hit by the fear, you run away. And you just path as away as possible. But this time, because he ran into a wall, he didn't run away as much. So Hui didn't have the time to run away. And when the W pulled um, Hui back, he was within range of the Q. So that was a pretty interesting interaction that I've never seen before. So that was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, other than that, Saints just had the better draft. Yeah, good game <laughs> from the Saints there in game one. We're gonna throw it to a quick break, but we'll be right back with the draft two. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everybody. We are just underway in the draft of Game 2. St. Clair, Saints taking on Boston University. Saints were able to come out victorious in Game 1. 27-minute game, but it was a very exciting game at that. And let's take a look at the draft here for Game 2. All six bands coming out early. Saints take off Zoe, Lee Sin, and that Senna. You know, they did pretty well into it, deciding to ban it out. And on the side of Boston, they're going to take out Olaf, Tristana, and that Twisted Fate. And yet again, Saints... First picking that Nico, loving that pick, and they're gonna continue to stick with it. I mean, Nico is just so fun to play. I mean, you don't not want to play Nico, and when Nico is in the meta, it's like I get to have fun and blow people up with AOE. I mean, sign me up. Um, so yeah, Nico always gonna be picked first pick if it's available. The Jay's gonna be locked in by Boston University this time, along with the Rek'Sai. All right. Yeah, I mean, probably going top lane that Rek side. Yeah. It's been super, super popular. It's just unkillable in lane and too much healing. You know, doesn't do too much come late game, but just becomes unkillable. I think we're going to see a Lucian Nami answer here from the Saints. There it is. Yep. They've been practicing that one a good amount, and it's a very, very strong lane that's coming back into the meta. <sighs> okay, hot take here, but like, I feel like Lucian Nami is kind of bait. It's, don't get me wrong, it's a bully in lane. And like, individually the champions are strong, or relatively strong, but I just, I feel like there's better combos. Like, you can have the Ash Varus combo. Ash Varus goes hard. Um, you can have stuff like, um, uh, uh, oh god, I'm lagging. Why is brain lag? Um, what are the other combos that are really good right now? Like, the Senna Orn combo goes hard. I mean, granted, it's banned here. Uh, but, like, there are just so many combos that are better than Lucian Nami that aren't being played. Like, where's the Jin at? I want to count to four and stuff, you know? Uh, Jin Pike goes hard, or Pike Draven. Like, I kind of want to see those aggressive lanes that are a little bit more centered around that than Lucian. I don't know. Lu Lucian just doesn't feel like an ADC that goes really well. I don't know. That's just me. Talia being picked up, though, by Boston. Pretty interesting pick. I kind of want to see where that one plays out. I mean, it's good into the dashes of Lucian. I mean, obviously. But the band's coming out for the second time here. Boston's going to get rid of Nidalee and Xin Zhao. They don't want Maddie on any of those carry champions in the jungle. And Sane's going to ban out that Nautilus and Lulu, both who pair up so, so well with that Jinx. Going to take the Milio, though. Okay. Another okay. amazing support for Jinx, giving her even more range and some more sustain with that ultimate. Cleansing all CCs into that Nico. That's going to be a very, very interesting pickup for Boston. They're saving that last pick for either their jungler or top because you can flex that Rexa into the jungle, obviously. It looks like Maddie's going to be picking up that Volley Bear pick. He's, be, he's been practicing a lot lately and he's been very, very good on. So he's going to pick that one up with a fourth pick and let's see what Ricky decides to pick into the top lane here. It's either into Rek'Sai or completely blind. It could be like Volley to Top. It could be Volley Top, but... I don't think that's that's a pick that Ricky plays too much. It's going to be the Renekton Ooh. picked up in the top lane. That is something he plays a lot more of, and he's going to be a very, very strong on that champ, no matter what he plays into. Uh, Renekton against Rek'Sai. I'm not going to lie. This isn't a matchup that's going to be easy for Ricky. Because Renekton into Rek'Sai, Renekton gets out healed in lane, at least. Uh, the Vi going to be picked up by Boston. So for that jungle, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this one plays out. Talia mid, I mean, Talia mid into this team composition isn't the best, to be honest. There, there are no dashes. Like, okay, you have the Lucian Renekton. and Renekton, because Volley Bear's dash is unstoppable. So, what are you really stopping? I mean, you're stopping the, the dash, the, the Renekton from getting onto your Jinx as that's basically your only job is to Leo this game. Just make sure that Renekton can't dash onto your Jinx. Yeah. I guess, yeah, that does have some utility, but just generally speaking, I don't know. I feel like a Hue or uh, a, a Syndra, maybe even an Oriana could have had more utility here than, a, than the Talia, but that's just me. Yeah, I don't think that's that's the worst take ever. 
Talia, you know, not a very high damage uh, mid lane champion. I think the Nico will definitely get a bit more value in the team fights here. And we saw last game, Boston had a couple winning lanes here and there, but in those team fights, Saints, even in that 3 5 at that Baron fight, were just able to just win the team fights with the stronger champion. So it's going to be a very, very interesting second game. I think Saints uh, have won the draft yet again here, but that Vi 5 pick, I think, is a very, very interesting pickup as well. Yeah, the Vi is going to be playing relatively well here into the team composition. Just that lockdown being able to play around the EDC and just say, no, you don't get to play the game. Um, but again, Saints do have a little bit of peel, so maybe they can get the Vi off after that ultimate. It, 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 I, honestly, I don't think there's a side specifically that wins on this draft. I think it's pretty, pretty equal. That's fair, and we're going to see how even it really is. We're going to throw it to a very, very quick break, but we'll be right back with the start of Game 2. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back everybody, we are just about to get on the rift in game 2, St. Clair College against Boston University, it is best of 5, so first to 3 wins, St. Clair were able to take the first game and they're going to look to keep that momentum going, trying to take a 2-0 lead in the series. Yeah, and here as we can see, runes are looking pretty standard, both supports going with summon airy. Uh, Lucian taking first strike and Jinx taking that lethal tempo. Uh, the phase rush on the Talia is interesting, but not uncommon, I would say. Um, of course, I can comment on Nico, just a staple. The PTA on Volibear means he's kind of going for a little bit more of a damage build instead of that more tank build where you would see Conqueror coming out. Because let's be honest, um, Conqueror Volibear heals a little bit too much uh afterwards of course you have conqueror on the renekton because i mean the only other option is pta but if you build pta on renekton you're more going for that one shot lethality type build uh the rexai opting for the grasp so it's definitely going to be one of those tank rexais that will be played it's kind of useless in the late game but very strong early game um so we're probably going to be seeing an early sunfire and conqueror on the vi so pretty decent and common runes here coming out on both sides yeah and they have a ward down there in that bali in that bush so miracle is going to be spotted out alongside rob when they won't get too much of a cheese at level one as he said top lane it's going to be a pretty boring i want to say lane but Ne can never really be a boring lane with the Renekton, but Rek'Sai, as you said, will have so, so much sustain in that top lane. Just such a strong pick right now across all levels of play because of how much that passive W healing really has. Ricky going to look for some early trades here, but Rek'Sai, you know, has to wait until he's level 2 here. But he's going to take a really bad trade here. Ricky's going to do so much damage on uh, that Renekton. It's a great start to the lane for him as he capitalized off an early mistake from uh, the Rek'Sai. But over time, the healing will come out from the Rek'Sai. In the end, it shouldn't be the biggest deal. Yeah, I mean, uh, th one of the things with Rek'Sai is that healing really comes online when you hit level 4. So, yeah. like, the best way... To win lane against Rek'Sai is to take those really early trades before level 4. Uh, before that healing on the passive goes up so much. So one of the biggest factors that will have to be covered is um, essentially just taking care of that healing just in case. Um, and as trades go on in the top lane, right, you kind of want to watch out. Because, uh, like, here, yeah, okay, the Rek'Sai is healing a little bit as, you know, they go unburrowed and into Bardo, but it's not that high before level 4, so it, they're going to be really, really low. It's going to be hard to play. Yeah, I mean, you would love to see Matty go for uh, bot to top, but this game, both junglers decided to path from top to bottom, so they're going to be fighting around this early first Scuttle Crab and balling, but... Saints have the prior with relative easier considering they've Lucian Nami as their bot lane. They will be able to pick up this uh, bottom skull crab, and it looks like Saints are just beating Boston in these uh, very, very early game rotations. So they're going to pick up the first scuttle crab, and Bai is going to try and make her way over towards that top lane or top side of the map. Sorry, pick up that scuttle crab as well. And you could see now the Rek'Sai is somehow more HP than the Renekton, but the good trade comes out from Ricky looking to find one more Empowered Q. We'll find it Ooh. onto the Rek'Sai there, but the healing from the Rek'Sai is still so, so good. It's going to get that again as soon as that bar fills up as Ricky might look for a recall here. Now going to choose to stay in the lane as it looks like Maddie actually going to be able to pick up both of those Scuttle Crabs early in the game. Going to give Saints a lot of vision early as going to cut off the rotations from this Y. The ganks won't be too easy just yet. Yeah, and as Rek'Sai kind of builds up that uh, tunnel network, you know, getting the, the, the subway oh. ready, uh, the Flash. gang comes out, though, holy Volibear landing the stun and giving Renekton that first blood, going to make Rek'Sai's life a little bit more difficult when they come back to lane. But the Vi is sitting down in this ball and Rock Boom dashes in, that is a very, very hard play here for them to pull off. Miracle going to be forced to flash out as well. All sums burnt from the ball lane of the Saints. They will be able to make it out of their life. They do get the ghost from this Jinx. They're going to try and turn a 3v2. But Rockham going to walk right into that Vi Punch. It's going to be able to stay alive. Still has that Ignite. It's still an uh, interesting trade from both sides. As low HP bar on that Jinx. Nice try from the Saints there. But Externic in a bright spot. 
place at the right time, making sure that nothing more comes up that place, trying to help his team push out the wave here by Rock Boom and Miracle, playing with such confidence, just walking up 2v3 here, not even scared of the challenge. They still have that ignite if needed. It looks like it's just going to be the bot lane push coming out from the side of Boston as the trade comes out in the top lane. Volibear going to pick up the first three Void Grubs here as well off the back of that play. So great job from the Saints to stay alive there in that 3v2 scenario as it was the ultimate oh. going to come out here from the Nico who was just a minion's going to pick up that buy. Great kill there from Bakery Boys. Ricky going to look for a solo kill onto this Rex. He's going to get under tower but Volibear just going to drop that in on top of there. No teleport now for Rex. Oh. As he's going to get the stop onto the Talia wall there. Will get knocked back. Doesn't have flash but has more than enough HP to get out of his life. Beautiful route there from Bakery Boys. Rock Boom is going to be able to get out with his life. Miracle body blocking those cues as it's pixel perfect play from the Saints. Everyone's going to be able to stay alive and they're just destroying Boston University in this early game. I am baffled. I don't even know what to say. First, okay, so first Bakery Boy roots Talia while Talia is mid ultimate, which is absolutely insane. And then the body blocking was just phenomenal by Miracle. I mean, managing to make sure that none of those pebbles hit Rock Boom and keeping them alive just long enough to get them under tower was insane. Never seen that before. Very, very good plays by Bakery Boy. And you can see Saints definitely upping their play the longer the season has gone. And in these playoffs, you can see how well they are playing. A, a couple too many mistakes, I want to say, in that first game. It wasn't really the cleanest game from them, as you would expect. But this second game has been amazing. The Dragon's up here. Let's see how the fighting is going to be here. Both junglers are bot side. Ricky having an insane advantage top lane, considering he got a couple ganks from Maddie, but was able to set those up with his great play in lane. And look, they're forced to back all the way off their tier one here. Maddie, though, gonna walk up a bit too far, forced to ult out. Will be able to stay alive, though, but the wave is gonna be dropped here. Never mind, the Jinx gonna come back and gonna pick that one up. Maddie walking up a little bit too far, getting a bit too greedy there. Will be forced to use his ultimate as Miracle gets caught here. Will he be able to stay alive on this? Nami, yes he will. You can see Bakery Boy is here as well, has that Paw Blossom, so Boston gonna respect that one as well. Uh, looking very good for the Saints, up 15 CS in bot lane, up 20 CS up in that top lane, and they're gonna look to maybe play for these 6 grubs and just take these turrets down quickly. Yeah, that's the other thing uh, with Observer POV. Even when you're in Observer POV, Nico is still hard to see. Yeah. Like, when she's in minion form or in any other form. Well, okay. Well, if she's playing as, like, red buff, it's kind <laughs> of easy to tell. Because there's just this big red buff right in front of you. But, like, when Nico's a minion, even as, like, somebody who has observer POV, you don't know where Nico is. Like, Nico is pretty much the only person that can sneak up on the observer. Um, so, that is pretty terrifying uh, to just see happen. Because even we don't expect the Pop Blossom when she comes out. So when that Pop Blossom does end up connecting, everything blows up and the only people that know what's going on is the Saints. Because they're the only ones that can actually see Nico. Yeah, without a doubt. And the first dragon is going to get taken here by St. Clair. They just have pressure all over the map here. Those Void Grubs are going to be spawning in less than a minute. So I think Saints should look towards that as well. If you're able to get six of them, they're very, very, very strong when you start hitting away at those turrets. So let's see what the play is going to be here. It looks like they're going to be looking to dive bot. Matty has that ultimate yet again on Volibear. <laughs> he is on full vision, but single-handedly just forcing them back. Going to land that as well onto the Jinx. Ricky now looking for trades here in this top lane. Has his ultimate ready. Does he have that W as well? You can see how easily though Rex can get away out of trouble. So nothing going to be found there. And Matty going to force... Some they can dive members, bot. Here, actually. They could look to dive bot before members from Boston rotating all the way to that ball. You can see everyone, eight members, rotating over to that ball, making sure nothing too crazy happens. As both teams have shown that that ball in is something they want to focus around. Yeah, well, the volley bear is also just terrifying because diving towers is some of the easiest things yeah. you can do as volley bear, right? So it's kind of going to be sophisticated to try and counter that, and that's why they had to rotate four players just to try and dissuade that gank 
um, and tower dive, but and the Saints here are kind of just saying, okay, well, we have nothing else to do. Void Grubs, you know, we're still on timer, so let's just threaten to dive bot because... I mean, who doesn't want to dive bot on their spare time, you know? Um, it's it's a very fun hobby to have. But now that the objectives are actually coming up, you can kind of see them pathing towards those Void Grubs so that they can actually get some productivity out of their day. Um, Void Grubs now no longer have the shield too, so Rel Jungle is no longer... Uh, priority in the draft, so little thing I just remembered now that I saw a grub die and a shield not showing up. Uh, so we won't be seeing Rel anymore in the uh, more competitive scene, unless oh. the support, of course. And that could be a pick on to Miracle, and it will be a pick. Nice little uh, punch there through the wall from Eccentric on that Vi, and is able to pick up a kill for Boston University, but they did give up those six grubs, as you mentioned, and now as soon as Saints pick up a kill or two, they're going to be able to chomp away those turrets. Look how much damage Ricky's done to that top lane turret. I think he's taken three plates so far, and now with the six grubs, he's going to look to keep that pressure going. Going to be a full HP as well. Rock Boom walking up very, very far. He's going to take a lot of poke with that short range Lucian. And the Talia wall is going to come through here. The Vise here as well. They oh do have everything. The TP is going to come out. The Rock Boom going to get hit by that pullback from Talia. Great play there. Here's Bakery Boy with the ultimate. They're going to find it on 2 2. <laughs> Finds one. Ricky will throw with the TP as well. Going to find the kill onto the Talia. They're going to be able to pick up the Y as well. And just like that, Saints go 3 for 1 using those teleport advantages beautifully. And the overcommit from Boston University gets punished perfectly yeah they they saw the teleport and didn't think fast enough because they probably thought oh well it's renekton it's fine but no that was not renekton that was a nico and a nico is significantly more terrifying to deal with than a renekton because of that pop loss I mean, we saw that connecting onto three people everybody's gonna die um Matt, bakery boys mechanics on nico are also insane i mean we saw him using that clone to tank katalia cues uh just the use of the stealth I, I, Bakery Boy is very, very good on that Nico, just generally speaking. Um, and it helps that, unlike in pro play, Nico doesn't get um, banned as much in collegiate and doesn't get disabled because of bugs. It's like Azir and Nico, right? In pro play, they get disabled all the time because of bugs. But in collegiate, it doesn't happen. So you get to see them play a little bit more consistently, which is very, very nice to see. Yeah, and you're going to see them going for this trade 2v2 bot lane as they do have a bit of an advantage. Static Shiv now picked up, but look at the Nami ultimate. Going to force out both summoners here from Jinx, and that's going to be massive for this next Dragon's Fight. Matty is throwing <laughs> up some emos there, wondering why. The Boston just decided to throw away some key, key ultimates there, but a great play from the Saints. This should secure them the second dragon as this Jinx, just with no summoners, can't really afford to do anything, especially when the side of St. Clair have that Paw Blossom, have that Lucian ultimate, and if the Vibear is able to get on that back line, this Jinx is going to be toast. Yeah, I mean, all ultimates are available for the Saints, and three out of their five flashes are up too. So there's a lot they can do with it, and it's just hard right now for Boston University because they need that Jinx to scale, right? Jinx Melio is a really good combo, very, very strong. I mean, your Jinx end up having insane range with um, uh, the rocket launcher. I was, I don't know why I was thinking pow pow, like. I don't know, I had like a tooltip show up in my head that of like Jinx's gun names and for some reason then they, they just call it a rocket launcher. But yeah, that rocket launcher has insane uh, range and then you add, add on top of that usually a rapid fire cannon and a Melio uh, campfire and you just, I mean it ends up being a shredder at, again, an oh, artillery range. Here's a Talia of, ultimate. Uh, but Numbers. won't be able to find anything. Rock Boom forced to flash. And in that meantime, they were able to take the second dragon as well. So it's going to be Infernal Soul second game in a row here. It spices up the rift a little bit. Gives you a little bit more movement around the rift. So I think it's good when you're ahead of having that Infernal Soul just 
be the soul, you can push your advantages that just that little bit more. They're gonna pick up that Rift Herald alongside the six Void Grubs, and they've just taken every single objective. They're up so so much gold. You can see when you look at the items, Jinx still yet to have her first item. Two Sundered Skies on the side of Saint Clair. They're gonna have that Static Shift on that Lucian as well, and that Proto Belt again on that Nico. Only one who's really competing with the side of St. Clair and Boston is that Talia does have that Leandris and they're going to find that shutdown onto Nico using that oh by Talia no. combo. Great kill for Boston University. Going to try and put themselves back into the game but you can see Saints going to take that bot tier one and they have the Rift Hell ready as well as soon as they want to pressure another lane. Yeah, that Vitalia combo definitely coming in clutch here as the Brookside is picking up her first item. Uh, gonna be that some fire cape, which is I mean just pretty common nowadays. Um, but it is very slow. I mean we're looking at a fifteen minute first item, which I mean that's that's a lot of time. Decimus being popped by the Renekton here, gonna get a lot of healing off thanks to that Sundered Sky. But those trades in the top lane are just. I mean, they're basically just wet noodle fights. And the fight in the mid lane, they're going to be able to pick up that Talia. The flash forced out by that Milio. Saints able to find the pick yet again. The Rift Herald is going to get spawned. And let's see how much Saints <laughs> easy can hitting. get done here on this push. <laughs> Maddie hitting the emotes. Going to get the charge through here. That's going to take out the turret in a swift fashion. Let's see if they can get another charge off. Maddie's getting inside the Rift Herald. Look at the amount of grubs they have running up there. Vi 1E takes all of those down. Can Saints actually take down the tier 2 bakery boy? Gonna Gonna threaten them with that fake one. Not gonna use that paw blossom there. If that was a real Nico though, that would have been a massive a play there. They're gonna be able to get two tier ones here. Rex I trying to get a tower back in that tall plane, but not gonna be able to find it. And both top laners, I think, went for a little bit of a reset there. Both gonna be a full HP here. But you can see Rex even though she's behind 2k gold almost, I wanna say, still in these trades relatively very, very even alongside this one. I can see why this Rek'Sai is such a powerhouse picker now as she takes absolutely no damage in these trades. Oh no, the Rex, uh, Rek'Sai, I mean, she takes damage and then she just heals it. I mean, she's full health and going for a recall. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But, I mean, another aspect that is kind of important to keep in mind is the Rek'Sai is not only behind, but isn't really useful in team fights. All Rek'Sai does is tank yeah. and heal. Right, it's not like an Aatrox that actually deals a lot of damage. It's literally just healing, um, and like maybe executing oh. one champion at some point. Uh, with she's the dead. Ultimate. Oh yeah. Bye bye. Gonna have that burrow to get away, but Saints forcing so oh. much onto this Rex side. They're not gonna actually find the kill as this Rex side just able to get out of danger, forcing four people top, a couple ultimates, but able to stay alive. That's a great play from the Rex side there. A bit of an overcommit from the Saints as they're gonna lose a lot of pressure down towards that bot side of the map. Maddie's gonna take away one more camp. The resets are gonna come through as the Talia ult is coming in and alongside that Vi. Yet again, they're gonna be able to find Bakery Boy. He's gonna find that Pop Blossom, but just single handedly not going to have enough damage to take anyone out. Will he be able to make it out with his life here? Let's see if the Vi is going to find the follow-through by Rock Boom. It's here alongside Miracle. Let's see if they can find a kill here. No, they won't be able to. Jinx Rocket misses as well. And Bakery Boy somehow makes it out with his life. But you could see that Talia Vi combo definitely able to find those picks in the jungle. Yeah, I mean, that must have been like 20 health that Nico survived on there. Uh, the Flash W... Yeah, f no, the the flash E to reposition themselves and lock down both players was absolutely insane from Bakery Boy. I've never seen that before. Uh, plus, the Pop Blossom was uh, very well executed, but then again, it's, it's Pop Blossom and Zaywee. Uh, but yeah, that root just connected so well, oh. I am baffled. The oh, RFC now picked up by Rockwim. He's up a full item on uh, that oh, wow. Jinx at 19 minutes. So you can see this Lucian Nami definitely proving to be very, very strong down in this bot lane. As now he's going to be harassing with that rapid fire cannon. They're going to be able to take this third dragon. Going to put themselves on soul point in just 20 minutes into the game. Now they're going to look to take this tier 2. I wonder if Maddie's going to run over there and ult this one so they can get a lot more gold going. Ricky going to get hit by that Talia. Has to be very, very careful here. We'll flash out. Use that ultimate. The Nami ult comes out. Rockboom going to use that ultimate. The Rocket is blocked by Miracle as <laughs> Maddie's there to block off that Vi Punch, but nobody's gonna go down. Everybody staying alive. That Milio alongside the Nami just able to keep everyone topped up. And 
nobody's gonna die but uh, off the back of this this rex i pushed in this top wave took that tower down and great little split map play from boston but they are down 5k they're down three dragons and with this baron spawning up in just a few seconds i think that's going to be the next big objective objective to play for in this game yeah baron definitely going to be the main objective to be playing for uh other aspects to keep in mind is that just the saints are so ahead right now it's very hard to play into them, right? The team fight is going to be really hard with that Nico ultimate. Um, Renekton is able to get on that back line. Talia is... And Talia is pretty much their only source of damage right now. The yeah. Jinx doesn't have reliable crit. Vi doesn't deal that much damage. Rek'Sai is a tank, so no damage. And, well, Melio is a healer, so no damage. Uh, versus the Saints who have that Nico, who have that Lucian, who oh. have the Volley, who have the Renekton. Saints are going deep into the jungle here. That's a four-style flash by the Melio. So no too much danger here for Boston. But Saints, you can see, now that they have this advantage, they want to stop Boston from having any plays. They want to be proactive and make the plays themselves. Let's see if Maddie can get the steal here onto that one. Won't be able to find it as the Vi smites that one away. Maddie's going to take this Scuttle Crab and give themselves a bit more vision as Bakery Boy is now side leaning against the Rek'Sai. Not a 1v1 he can win, but definitely a, a lane in which he can just push out the waves and be at an even pace, which is not too bad for a Nico considering the rest of your team is in enemy jungle clearing vision. Yeah, I mean, getting that vision control is so important right now. Oh. And actually, they're going for a pick in the top lane here. As who is getting caught up? It's the Talia getting caught up by the Lucian. Rek'Sai going to TP in, borrow and unborrow. Going to get that uh, airborne, but not going to connect too much. Jinx getting the shutdown onto the Lucian, though. He's actually going to deal a pretty significant amount of damage. That's a three for one for the side of Boston University. That's that a is a potential comeback. Huge overcommit from the Saints there. and They just were too greedy for that kill. I think they have to play around Bakery Boy's ultimate. They can't really do anything without that Nico ultimate. And there's no way Boston University are starting up the bear. And they are. But they do have the damage for it. But Bakery Boy still does have that pop loss. And does have the flash coming up in just a few seconds. So let's see how Maddie and Bakery Boy side choose the one. They do no damage to this bear. And it's still at 9k. Bakery Boy going to go all the way around. And going to be able to hit up this flank. Let's see how the play comes through. There's the pop loss. The flash isn't online though yet. And Bakery Boy will find nobody with that one. Oh. Going to do a lot of damage though. So Maddie will still be here. Ricky coming in with the TP. And they're going to be able to find one. Let's see if they're able to pick up the Talia as well. Yes, they will be able to. Can they find this Rek'Sai? They don't have too much damage. This Rek'Sai is so, so tanky. But the Baron has been leashed for Sai of Sinclair. They're going to start hitting down. They have to find this Vi in this bush. Ricky is going to go clear that out to make sure this Vi has no chance of stealing this Baron. Will force the Vi away. Saints, yet again, on this Baron, are going to find the game winning plays. The Jinx Rocket comes through, almost finds the steal. The Smite does come through as Saints. Going to pick up the Baron yet again. And now, with that Dragon Soul spawning in about a minute, that's going to be the next big objective for them to play for. Yup, and that Dragon Soul is going to be so valuable for the Saints. They have the advantage. Honestly, they could probably just run it mid and win. But taking that Dragon Soul would definitely be a good uh, advantage to have before they do that. So, what is it coming in in 50 seconds? Uh... Around around a minute, yeah, around a minute. Okay, so yeah, they, they have a minute to set up their vision to uh, clear out enemy vision, and then once they have that down and uh, dusted, they can finally get started on the dragon, get that push. Actually, they're just starting to push right now. That mid lane is, uh, it's got a lot of minions in it. Yeah, Maddie hitting hitting the dance moves there on the volley bear. Great play from him so far this game. Vi gonna overextend a little bit, but you could let's look at the items. Let's actually we don't have time to look at the items. Talia ult's gonna come out. Maddie gonna try and flash in, but look at that Paul Blossom onto two. But on the other side of the map, Rock Bloom's gonna get flashed on. They're gonna be able to find the Talia. Maddie's gonna ult onto that Jinx. The Lucian does fall for the side of the Saints, but Ricky is gonna find the kill there. The Vi is gonna be able to get away. 4v2 situation for the Saints as they look to push through and end the game here. But do they have the damage without their ADC? They're gonna be able to find the Rek'Sai as well. The mid turret should be dropping here, and this could be all she wrote 20 seconds for the saints to end the game off here they do have the damage from the looks of things they also have six void grubs which is 
crucial to this ending push. They're going to be able to take the first turret here. The Vi is going to get absolutely one-tapped here. The Ace comes through. Seven seconds till the Jinx spawns, and this should be all she wrote for the second games. They have about a million Void Grubs here. They're going to be hitting the Nexus, and in 25 minutes, Saints Woo! are going to put themselves on match point here. They're going to take the 2-0 lead, and they're going to win this game in decisive fashion. Yep. I mean, the Saints played it really, really well. Once they got them, like, the ball rolling, um, once they got the Baron taken, it was pretty much game over. I mean, they could have gone for the drag, but they were just, yeah, let's force a team fight. And then, yeah, the team fight just went completely downhill for Boston, and that was game. Yeah, I mean, it was great, great play. Saints definitely played that game a lot more cleanly. You could see the Talia and Vi were kind of the main focal points there. The Jinx just couldn't get online. Did find a couple of shutdowns in the later parts of that game, but it was just down an item at like 15 minutes. That's not a good sign for your balling. So Saints definitely picked up their level of play in that game too as they look for the sweep in this series. We're going to throw it to a quick, quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the draft for game three.
Welcome back, everybody. We are getting right into draft of a game three between St. Clair College and Boston University. Let's take a look at the ban. St. Clair banning out the Zoe, Leeson, and Senna. And Boston gonna ban out Tristana. They don't want to play against Nico anymore, so they banned it out. And the Twist of Fate. St. Clair first picking the Ari. Boston answering with Talia. Getting that wreck, so I go back up in that top lane. So they, I think they like their draft from last game a little bit. They're gonna opt to go for the same picks as St. Clair gonna go for the same things that worked as well. They're gonna pick up that volley bear and let's see what they decide to pick up on the third pick here. Yeah, here you might want to pick up that uh, either a support that could flex um, top or something. Or Okay, yeah, just pick your top lane. That works yeah. too. Uh, kind of just blocking out that Rek'Sai with the same matchup again that was kind of very neutral. Yeah. Um, but in the team fights, Renekton pretty much wins. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Ari though being picked up instead of the Nico, uh, which kind of makes sense. But Nico has a pretty good lane into Talia. Ari has a pretty bad lane into Talia. Because uh, well, of course, Ari has dashes on her ultimate, and Talia has a no dash zone, uh, which is not going to be fun to deal with if you are Ari. Um, of course, the Jinx here being picked up. But not being paired up with a support is going to be kind of interesting because now the Saints have the option to ban and pick uh, multiple supports that can go really well with the Jinx here. Like one of the best strategies to do is ban out like a, a Nautilus or um, yeah. or a Sona or something, anything that goes really well with Jinx. Pick Lulu and then pick a Felios for your bot lane and you just got yourself something that absolutely curb stomps the Jinx. But I don't know, does, does Rock Boom play a Felios? Rockboom plays a bit of everything, honestly. He's a pretty, pretty flexible player well, I, down in the ball lane, so... It's because Aphelios is a special case. Uh, you need a PhD to play Aphelios. True, and, you know, Rockboom, I think he could play it, but I don't think we're going to see it this game. I think he has some <laughs> other comfort picks that <laughs> he might pull out. We're going to see the Lucian ban, so we won't be seeing that one again. The Tom Kench ban coming out from St. Clair. That's a good ban, making sure that they can't buy, uh, eat that Jinx. Zeri ban... Another one of Rock Boom's very, very good champions. And Lulu picked a uh, band out from St. Clair. Let's see what Boston decides to pick up here. Saints haven't picked anything for their bottling here, so they're going to have the counter pick here. Let's see if Boston decides to pick support or jungler here. I would like to see the jungler being picked up here. So, because they know the Volley Bear is going to be in the jungle, you already know what you're yeah. playing against. And we're going to see the Vi yet again. They're going to have that counter pick for the support. Not something I hate too much. Let's see what Saints decide to pick out here. I'd like to see something spicy like a Caitlyn Lux, something you'd never ever see. Because that's, that's a champion you never see, you know, Caitlyn. Not really too strong in the meta right now, but. If you have the right people controlling those champions, yeah. it could be very, very scary. See, Caitlyn's mostly a solo queue champion, right? You you don't see the Caitlyn being played oh, as a lethality type champion for an ADC. But the Kai'Sa Nautilus, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> they're going to have fun in the bot lane. And uh, Boston is not. Because Kai'Sa Nautilus is not a fun time. Uh, mainly not into a Jinx. I mean, even if you counterport. Uh, counterport. Ah, uh, yes. Counter the support. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm melding my words together. Oh, Brom. Okay, the Brom can help a little bit here. Uh, blocking those hooks, kind of blocking the projectiles from Kaisa or part of the damage. Uh, it's going to be useful, but uh, how useful is it going to be? I don't know. Not that much. <laughs> I mean, you look at the side of Boston, they have basically the same draft as last time, just instead of Enchanter, they have a Brom down in the ball lane and we saw they kind of lacked damage last game. The only real way you can win this if you're Boston is if you get that Jinx really far ahead. And Saints did everything to deny that with their play down in the ball lane. So this time, it's going to be a run back again. But now instead of having the Lucian Nami who are so strong in lane, they're going to have Kaiser Nautilus who's as strong down there. So yeah. it's going to be another... Uh, interesting game to see. I wonder how this game's going to go. Plus, the other perk is Lucian is pretty bad against tanks, right? He doesn't have any percentage health damage yeah. or anything like that. Um, and he mostly plays around uh, Krish, 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 Krish. the shard thingies that empower your auto attacks if you move a lot. Um, words are hard. But Kai'Sa has a lot of that tank busting potential. Yeah. So it's going to be fun to see how uh, the Kai'Sa kind of gets played because into the Braum, into the Rek'Sai, uh, they're going to blow up a lot easier. 
without a doubt. We're gonna throw it to a uh, very, very quick two, three minute break, but we'll be right back with game three as Saints look to take the 3 0 sweep over Boston University.
Welcome back everybody, we're just about to get on the rift with Game 3 here. St. Clair College against Boston University. Similar drafts to last game, but oh, for Boston University, St. Clair College spicing it up. Going for some different picks here, as uh, we're going to see some uh, interesting summoners coming out here. Exhaust Cleanse on the side of Braum Jinx, and it's going to be uh, Ghost Ignite for the side of Rockwind Miracle. It's going to play a big part down that bot lane. Yeah, that bot lane is definitely going to be uh, an interesting one. I mean, Jinx is going to have so much CC just thrown at her that that cleanse is partially necessary. But cleansing most of Nautilus's uh, abilities is kind of pointless. I mean, you can't cleanse the hook. You can't cleanse the alt. Cleansing the slow is, well, you're cleansing a slow. And if you cleanse the auto attack, what you end up having is a scenario where you're cleansing half a second of CC. Which, between you and me, cleansing half a second of CC isn't worth much. Yeah. So, the cleanse is useful, but not all that useful. Like, the Jinx is probably going to want to I'll probably... Get like the charm or the stun from Volley Bear or the stun from Renekton cleansed just to get more efficiency out of that uh, cleanse. But again, you gotta cleanse what you gotta cleanse at the end of the day. If you're stopped from moving, you're better off moving than not moving. Absolutely, I have to agree with you there. And it's gonna be similar lanes, uh, top lane. You're gonna see Ricky probably try and get out to an early lead again, but. He was able to find that really good trade level 1 last time. This time, not going to be able to find that one. As Maddie now going to path from bot to top. And the Vi is going to path from top to bot. This is the first time in the series we see both junglers going for different starts here. So, looks like Maddie might look for a gank top lane. While extending on that Vi. Going to go down towards that bot lane. And maybe look for a play there. Ricky, yet again on that level 2 time. We're going to look for early trade by Rek'Sai. Is going to take too much damage there. I think this might be probably the longest game of the series by far. We have a lot more scaling in this game. Uh, alongside that Ari and Kaiser. All these champs love going towards the late parts of the game. But I think Saints have a little bit more snowball potential. If you can get that Kaiser a couple kills really early on. She just has so much mobility. So much damage. It's going to be hard to keep her off the board. And you can see... Oh, gonna oh, miss that cannon, oh no! Block that one away. That's a bit of a big nice brain play move there from the Brom as Rob. We're gonna drop, be dropping that cannon, and it's those kind of little tiny advantages that can win you that ball in when you're evenly matched. And so far this game, a way better start for Boston University down this ball in compared to last game. Yeah, blocking that cannon is gonna be infuriating. You know, Rock Boom is just. Raging right, now. yeah. There, there's the emo crying. Oh, it feel you. There is a physical pain that you feel whenever you see somebody miss a cannon. Like it's just, it it makes you want to cry. <laughs> yeah, I don't like missing cannons. I hate missing cannons too. It's just as soon as I miss the cannon, I just oh, I don't even want to get started. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully Rockboom can live over it. It's not the biggest deal, obviously. It's still a lot of game to play, but. Boston University, very, very early on, going to get some advantage in these lanes. They're up 300 gold in four minutes here, so good start for them CS-wise. Even along along all the lanes, Ricky actually going to take a Cheetah Recall, going to buy BF Sword and come back to lane. Rek'Sai going to back as well, but forced to teleport, so Ricky is going to have that very, very early teleport advantage. Let's see if the Wait, Saints BF Sword? can maybe... Oh, not BF Sword, Long Sword, sorry. Okay, I was going to say... <laughs> Got a BF sword? What is he building? Yeah, I mean that that would be something if we <laughs> that saw. That would be so BF much sword. gold value. But Holy. Another cannon here. Oh, they're gonna be able to pick that one up. Miracle gonna pick that one up this time with the auto attack. As a very very even start to this game three. Let's see if Miracle's gonna look for a hook here onto this drink. Gonna force out those rockets. They have the level advantage here. Let's see if they can find a lot of damage here. That's a nice hook. There's gonna be the exhaust coming through, and now Saints are gonna back up, getting that. Exhaust out for free is huge. Miracle could find maybe one more hook here and it could be a great trade for the Saints. But they're going to get this push in as maybe they look to move their way over into this river. Get some more vision. Miracle probably going to drop a ward inside of the bush. 
as Saints have Pryo down inside of this ball. And the gang's coming out top lane, though, from this vial. Let's see if Ricky is going to be able to survive. He does flash out, but will be going down to this wreck side. Now it's Boston who are playing for this top side of the map as Saints are going to trade that kill out for a dragon. Yeah, those dragon stacking is still in the meta here. Um, but the Void Grubbies will be going to Vi. So, I mean, a trade of a kill and the Grub Nuggets for a dragon might not be worth it here, but they did force the flash out of Braum, and that is going to probably be a dive in the bot lane, considering Volley is going for the Gromperton. Either that or they're going to cut off Jinx. And the hook's going to come through from Miracle, a little bit more poke onto that Braum, but as you said, maybe a dive coming out from Balin. Maddie's not level 6 though, so it's going to be way harder to dive this into a Braum. If this is the play they go for, it's a very, very risky one at that. Let's see if this is the wave they choose to do it on. They should look to shove this one in, but the Talia ult's going to come through onto Ricky up in this top lane. Will he be going down yet again? Yes, he will. It's a 1v3 scenario here. It's going to be impossible to survive, but on the flip side, now Saints have to go for this dive. They need to find this kill onto Jinx. She does have both summoners, but the ult from Ari is coming out. The stun's going to come through. The charm comes through onto the Braum. That's one kill. Let's see how they decide to play the redive. Miracle going to find their automatic, tanking up the turret. Double kill going over to Rock Boom. Huge split map play from the Saints. Great play for both teams, but I think Saints will be way more happy that their Kaiza is fed compared to the Vi and Rek'Sai getting a couple kills early. Yeah, Vi getting a kill, Rek'Sai getting a kill is fine, but like a fed Kaisa is a little bit more of a problem. Uh, picking up that Kester, words are hard. That Kestershire, Worcestershire shard. <laughs> no, that's a sauce. Um. And that Noon Quiver going to get her a lot of progress towards what is probably going to be a static shift first item. Um, but uh, it's going to be hard for Boston University to recover from this one. Two kills on a Kaisa. Now your Jinx doesn't get to play. Your Braum doesn't get to play. Uh, and your team fights are basically over. Yeah, it's going to be very, very hard to play, but... They do have the advantage up in the top lane. You can see Ricky this time. He's going for that anti-heal. Uh, the Executioner's on the first back. We didn't see that from him at all last game. But now he knows that he's behind. He needs a little bit more anti-heal in this lane against this Rek'Sai. He's not going to be the hard carry that he was the last few games up in this top lane. It's going to be all on Rock Boom here on this Kai'Sa. And Bakery Boy as well on this Ari. Off to a great start. Up 5 CS in a lane that's not really too favored for Ari. And having those two assists, going to have that early gold advantage against this Talia. But there's a Volley Bear in this mid lane. Maybe oh. looking to force out the Talia flash here. But this Talia is respecting the gank. Going to play this one safe. It looks like Saints, yet again, are rotating over towards that ball lane. Yeah, rotating towards that bot lane. I mean, it's it's kind of a common hobby that all league players have to just oh, dive bot. There's the engage onto the Ari Ooh. though. Nice ult from Vi. Talia gonna look for something as well. But meanwhile, that's happening. The ult in bot lane gonna get a kill, but it's traded out. This is not looking very good for the Saints. Rock Boom gonna try and get out. Miracle is probably dead here. Rock Boom gonna get oh, hit no. by that one and will be going down as well. Gonna use that ultimate and flash out. Will be actually able to survive <laughs> on one HP. Miracle is not able to hook the turret, but in the end of the day, it's still a very good play for Boston as they go three for one in this bot lane. Kaisa did survive though. Kaisa did survive. And so that means that the shutdown is still alive and you don't need to worry about it too much. Um, well, I mean, you do, but at least it's not on somebody else that cashed it in, right? Uh, so that is a static shift purchase for the Kai'Sa. 3-0 and plus uh, a dagger. But <sighs> that's not worth it. It's a, like it's good that Kai'Sa got out, but the fight wasn't worth it. Uh, the Ari here getting caught out was a huge problem, and that's that kind of plays around with vision, right? If Saints had that vision placed beforehand, uh, would have been a whole lot safer to walk through that jungle. But this time, uh, Ari maybe would have been better off walking through the river instead, but here got caught out and kind of screwed over the entire dive. Um, oh, hold on here in the top lane. Got a gank going on. Renekton not in the best of situations as he's fighting a 3v1. Gonna get picked off instantly. Tilly Ultimate is dedicated though, so... 
Boston are just throwing a lot more utility here into just playing around the side lanes and going a lot more towards that top lane. First few games, Ricky didn't really get ganked much at all, but this time Boston's going to be the one with the six Void Grubs, and this is a much, much better early game from them. Saints, past few games have found the advantages early. This game, they're going to be on the back for a little bit. They're basically whole team comp now revolves around Rock Boom because... Ricky on this Renekton won't be too useful for a good little bit here. This Ari as well doesn't have the first item after having that early advantage. It's kind of all on Rock Boom who has that 400 goal shutdown. But even this Jinx who did have a kind of rough early game going to have a shutdown as well. But for on the bright side for the Saints, they are going to be able to pick up the second dragon. This has been their win con in this past few games. But the Jinx oh, Rocket oh, the is going to find the steal there. Nobody's choosing to block that one. That's a crucial play for Boston there now. As they have a lot more time to survive and play into the soul point. They won't need to worry about that for at least another 15 minutes. And that's a crucial steal coming out from the Jinx. That was terrific. A beautiful ultimate. Did, did Jinx have vision there? Or did she just I don't fire think so. it high ha 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 Haphazardly. I think it was a blind one. Just okay, yeah, cool. Blind rocket gets drag. Uh we take those. <laughs> wow. Alright. Uh Boston University is actually in the lead on this one. Okay. That's good. If they're in the lead, there is there is an angle where they win this one, actually. Without a doubt, they have the team comp for it. We saw the basically the exact same team comp last game and that means they're comfortable with this team comp. They're comfortable with the uh, choices of the champions they have. And they think they just misplayed last game. But they have the right picks to win it. And, you know, from the way things are shaping up here, they might be onto something. Playing around this Jinx, Atalia, and Vi combo. Being so, so strong. This Rek'Sai, though, the longer this game goes, will fall off more and more. Will just be tanky. There will be a bruiser, but... Saints will have a lot more backline access with this Renekton, who's going to be a very, very fed one. If he can just play up here, get some farm going. But now that he's behind so much, he's forced under his turret just to farm up. Can't really make any active plays in that top side. It's going to be all around this bot side for the side of the Saints. Yeah, I mean, both top laners don't even have their first item yet. Uh, meanwhile, in the mid lane, Ari already has Malignance. Uh, the Leandri is already coming out on Talia. Of course, here, uh, Kaisa kind of has the advantage with all those kills. Has a pickaxe already. Starting to build what I be believe is going to be Aginzo's Rageblade. Um, Jinx does have the Static Shiv up and available now. Uh, but then again, it's... She is still behind. Um... And then when it comes to supports, I mean, they're both doing relatively well. I'd say they're pretty close in golds, although probably most of their gold is going towards pink wards. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, gold is relatively close, but Boston University definitely has a little bit of an advantage. Oh. Ooh, here in the mid lane, we got a little bit of a dive going on nice. as a shutdown oh, goes my through. Body. Oh, Maddie's on 1 HP. He will actually go down for that mistake, but Vi over committing to get that kill onto the Volley Bear. I don't know, even think that's worth it, giving the R yet another kill. As That's a great play from the Saints. They He's realize gone. they need to make a play here, and they need to make a quick. They take down the Talia, they get a flash as well, and the Vi sacrifices herself to get the trade. And a shutdown solo kill coming out from Rock Ooh. Boom onto that Jinx on full HP. I have no idea how that happened, but the Ghost was popped, the Ultimate was popped, and just like that, in a blink of an eye, Saints take the gold lead, and they're going to look to push their advantage. Yeah, that is a 1,000 gold lead going straight to St. Clair. Uh, something that wasn't there before, that's for sure. As those objective timers are starting to come off cooldown, we're going to be seeing probably a lot of team fights starting uh, very, very soon. And now we're kind of seeing how, yeah, okay, uh, Nautilus is kind of grouping up with the Volley Bear, escorting them towards that um, scuttle so that they can cover the 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 objectives that are coming up i think right now is the herald that's up um and then in the top lane trying to get that priority to open up availability for that uh rift herald that is uh pretty crucial right now i mean rift herald isn't as strong as it used to be in the last season but it's still really strong and yeah there it is going to the saints 
Uh, so they might actually just try and double turret mid like they did the last two games. Yeah, that might be the play going for. They're going to look on this Talia who doesn't have flash, but the rest of the team from Boston is here for the support. Maddie going to get chunked out a lot here early in this fight. Dragon up very soon as they're going on this till you have the charm misses from bakery boy by a lot of damage still done there the brahm is as good as dead maddie gonna find the stun onto the talia there that's a couple of kills going over to the saints they're gonna get a lot mid lane here they do drop the top turret bot turret gonna get taken down low as well as that jinx does find the recall but i think a great play from the saints here now as they take the tier one here should be looking to take their tier two as the resets come through before the dragon they're gonna uh -oh. pick up their item spikes and they're gonna come back to this dragon and hopefully take this one down without it getting stolen. Uh, I think Shelly's going for a ride. Oh, to the, to the ball lane. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, fair enough. And maybe a third crash? Oh. oh, some drunk driving coming out from Maddie, it seems like. Gonna go the wrong way on that Rift Herald charge. Just gonna probably get over towards that dragon now as Saints look to take their second dragon of the game. It is Cloud Soul. Very, very good on both sides here, this Cloud Dragon. So whichever team can pick up these dragons is gonna be at a massive advantage. Yeah, uh, to be fair, like, I'm not really blaming Maddie for that drunk driving. Oh, but, oh hold on. Oh, Vi's one shot. No, it's going to be Nautilus on 1 HP. Maddie's going to pick up that Vi as Rockboom goes onto the back line on that Kaiser. Does get exhausted. Doing so much damage from Maddie. Zoning off both carries of Boston University. Will go down for his troubles, but finds the Braum while he's at it. Does fall down. The flash charm from Bakery Boy does miss. Ricky Lafer on that back line. Everyone's on 1 HP. There's going to be another kill coming up from Rockboom. One more stun from Ricky Lafer. Will pick up a kill there, and it's going to be just a Jinx getting out with her life, but Ricky Lafer on 1 HP. He has to be very careful. He'll know Jinx Rocket though. So a great team fight from the Saints again. They maybe could have found a couple more kills there, but a couple of misses there coming out. A uh, couple mechanical misplays coming out there from the Saints. Maybe led to that Jinx surviving. Still, a great team fight from them. Rockboom able to go into that back lane. Just so fed on the Kaiser. Braum ult just completely thrown into the air. The charm hits. The hook oh, hits. No. And they should be able to find this Braum. The TP's coming out from Ricky Lafer. The stun looks to hit from the Jinx. The root does come through, but the Saints are just playing so so well right now, fi firing on all cylinders. They will make their way over to this dragon, pick that one up as they now have a 4k gold lead. Yep, that 4k gold lead is going to be detrimental uh, to Boston University's success right now because it's pretty much all on Kaisa. Like, that Kaisa is a pot of gold right now, a, a 700 gold shutdown, both Ginzu's Rage Blade. Anastatic Shiv up and running, going to probably recall soon uh, to get the more items. Yeah, there goes BF Sword plus a Recurve Bow. That's going to be so much damage coming out from that Kai'Sa. On top of that, the Ari also dealing a lot of damage with that Horizon Focus. You've got uh, Volley Bear with that Sundered Sky, who has insane healing. You've got the uh, Black Cleaver getting ready um, just kind of shred all the armor from that Rek'Sai, make it a little bit easier to kill him. Um, and then, I mean, if you're on the side of Boston, you just have nothing. There's no shutdowns anywhere. Nobody's ex especially fed. Your Jinx has... Uh-oh. Oh, oh. never mind. 20% crit? That's about it. And it's just unplayable. But, ooh, hold on here. Top lane. Two tanks brawling it out. Nothing too crazy gonna happen. There's Maddie. He's just trying to get this wave in. Maybe try and take down that tier one, but wherever Rockboom is, the rest of the team needs to be. Him and Miracle doing a great job down this volley in this entire series, it feels like. As they're gonna have full control of the enemy jungle. Miracle gonna Ooh. land the hook onto the Vi, but do they have the damage to follow up? They're in maybe a little bit too deep yet again. Miracle will be forced to flash out, but will be going down. We saw this last game kind of in this exact same spot. They choose to go too deep, and the Baron gets started up by Boston University. This game, Baron's not up for another 30 seconds, so Boston won't be able to make that mistake again just yet, but a nice little kill there onto the Nautilus as Saints trying to push their advantage just a little bit too much there. Yeah, here Boston clears waves, goes for the recall, and might actually opt for Baron here. Uh, but the Saints are all back up, so if 
Boston University are all recalling. That means the Saints could potentially get priority with awards on that Baron. Uh, because Dragon's up in two minutes, right? So they have time to kind of play around with that and see how they can do. Mid laners are now top lane, trying to get those waves pushed in. The top tower is still up for Boston University, so getting that down will help to get prio for that Baron. Without a doubt, and that third dragon is going to be spawning up in 2 minutes 30 seconds, so not an objective that either team is going to be setting up for too early here. Uh, that Baron is the only thing to come online, and it's going to be that steal from Boston on that second dragon that doesn't have St. Clair on that soul point. If it was that soul point for the Saints, they could go for the Baron and give up that dragon. And that would be a great split map push play here. But now Boston have a lot more leeway of how they want to play this one. They're still only down 3k gold. It's still a very, very close game. That Talia is on two items. Very, very much fed. That Jinx finally picks up that Kraken Slayer. But the, the Kai'Sa is going to pick, be picking up her third item. So yet again, Rock Boom up a full item on the enemy ADC playing tremendously in the series so far. Ricky Lefer getting himself back into this game a little bit after falling so far behind this Rek'Sai. Is up a lot Ooh. of CS up in his top and the Saints maybe look for a Baron Star with yep, his Kai'Sa on three items. She will be shredding this one, but no, they're going to opt to leave that one away. Bakery Boy, if he hit that charm, could have been crucial, but maybe they find a pick onto the Braum here. The TP is coming out from the Rek'Sai, side, but the Braum is getting completely one shot. Will be able to stay alive. Now the TP from Rek'Sai and from Ricky Lafer is going to be there. Ricky in the middle of all five. Will he be able to pick up a kill there? Yes, he will. Maddie ulting in as well. Can they find that Rek'Sai? Yes, they will. Saints have a five, 4v3 advantage now here as they're going to get out with their life. Let's see if one more hook from Miracle is able to hit here. Maddie also walking out. Bakery Boy looking for the charm there, but flashing out is the Talia. Great play from both sides, but Saints yet again finding the advantage here. It'll trade up their top lane for enemy top laner and the support. I don't know if that hit mid. Yes, it did onto Bakery Boy. That's going to be a big shutdown going over to the Talia as Saints now have to get out but Rock Boom is on full HP here will be able to find one can they take down the Jinx before she gets the reset Rock Boom you can see winning that 1v1 so so easily we'll find another one and that's going to be another kill going down for the Saints as Rock Boom is legendary they're going to make their way over to this Baron and they're going to be starting this one up as they take a big advantage in this game 3 yeah, the only person still up and alive is the Braum. And, I mean, let's be honest, Braum is not going to steal a Baron, realistically speaking. Um, so, easy, easy Baron for the Saints now that team fight is over. Unless... No, they have Smite. This is good. Yeah. Okay, whoo! I was gonna say, <laughs> there is a way. But, uh, yeah, here, Baron going to the Saints. And, I mean, at this Dragon's point... Up. Yep, it's pretty much over for Boston University. They don't really have anything available um, to kind of get priority on that dragon, right? They're low on... They have next to no towers. Um, they're... They, they're getting completely gold diffed. Um, kills aren't going their way. They don't have a, a player prior advantage or anything uh so th th this is kind of the point where you start to say okay well yeah now the rex eye kind of just gets useless yeah he's gonna get killed very very quickly as they're gonna look to go on him early here in the mid lane let's see how much damage this fed kaisa can do as it completely explodes by just suiciding into the middle of the saint Clair saints and it looks like boston are just falling apart you can see this talia though doing so much damage that's a reset for the jinx here maddie has to be careful here just tanking up 1v5 will go down as well saints get Getting maybe a little bit too cocky here, walking up way too far. They're gonna back up, take that dragon as Ricky is up in that top and gonna take that tier two. That's a lot of gold going over to him as Rock Boom should be starting up this dragon in just a second. Should be still impossible for Boston University to contest as Ricky did force out a lot of pressure. But Maddie and Miracle just getting a bit too excited there, I think, trying to just finish off the game as soon as possible. Boston holding on very, very well here. This Talia is getting more and more fed by the second as this. Jinx almost has that third item as well. Boston doing a good job of staying alive here, but Saints also doing a great job of expanding their gold lead slowly and slowly. Yeah, and now it's soul point, so it's going to be really hard for Boston University to get anything done uh, because they have to contest every drag from now on unless they want to deal with a team uh, nice and buffed up with that cloud soul. Uh, it's, I mean, already that the Baron is pressuring them so hard. Uh, Renekton just side laning and dominating uh, because of those side lanes. To be honest, Saints can probably just push mid with that Baron buff and win. 
But uh, here, actually, they're deciding to push bot and win as Rek'Sai is going to get completely picked off. Exploded by a rock boom. Tier 2 turret on the bot lane is going to be taken out right afterwards. And now Boston University needs to play tower defense. It's going to be hard to do that. Let's see what Bakery Boy can get done with this Ari. Can he find a crucial charm to just insta end the game? Saints have bot and mid wave synced up. They're going to be taking these turrets a one by one. Rockboom is in mid lane, so they have to be careful towards his boss head. Miracle actually going to get chunked out a lot, but Rockboom playing so, so aggressively is going to do a lot there. There's a charm coming through. Can they find the kill onto the Braum? Going to do a lot of damage even through that block. You can see how fed the Saints members are, and that's going to be a kill onto Braum. That hook guarantees. Uh, Bakery Boy gonna pick that one up as Ricky gonna go for a stun onto this Jinx. The cleanse comes through as Kaisa's back in the back line. Gonna find that kill. Rock Boom has to be careful here though, not to go down. Still on half HP, still free hitting. That's a double kill for Rock Boom, triple kill for Rock Boom as they're looking to finish off the game and finish it off with a clean sweep. Rock Boom 13 0 and 9 on this. Kaisa Talia is gonna go for a hero defense here, but the hook comes through from Miracle, and that's gonna be all she wrote. The ace comes through for the Saints as they're going to be able to take the 3-0 in pretty dominant fashion against Boston University and they're going to be moving on to round 3 of Seawall. Yep, I mean that's game 3-0 for the Saints. Very, very good execution. I Usually they 2-0 but this time it's the best of 5 so they said, well, we got a 3-0 them now. Uh, absolutely phenomenal performance the saints being dominant in every single match uh, a, a, a few hiccups here and there it happens yeah. uh, but other than that very very clean gameplay and we l absolutely love to see it uh, the only thing I'd want a little bit more is a little bit of off meta stuff but you know what it's fine. I mean, that was a great series from both teams. Boston definitely didn't just fall over and just lose. They they had oh, no, some they fought for it. Some 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 good plays, some good drafts, some good attempts from them. But uh, unfortunately for them, they were not able to come out victorious today. Saints very very nice three zero for them. They're looking good in playoff form as playoffs continue to go on. They're only going to get better and better. So I'm super excited to see what they can bring to the table. But that's going to be it for us today. Yep. Let's start closing this one out. Thank you to our sponsors. We have Tim Hortons, HyperX, Subway, the St. Clair SRC, and the St. Clair Alumni Association. Thank you to everyone in the back who made this stream possible today. We have Daniil back there, Amanda, so. and, and Matthias. So thank you guys for everyone in the back for making this one possible. Uh, Make sure to follow us on all of our social medias. It's playoff week coming up, so we're going to have a lot of action coming up next week. We have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, every, everything you could basically think of. So, we, socials plural. Social, yeah, socials plural. If you have it, we probably post on it. Absolutely. Every day. There you go. There's the screen for all of our updates. And you know what? With playoffs coming up, that's definitely something you're going to want to follow. But with all that being said, I've been your host, Theo, host of Holy Juan, joined by Gabriel. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a blast today. And we'll be back on Monday with playoffs at 7 p.m. Don't miss it.